NovaSQL database with Apache Beam. Uh, my name is Jan, and I'd like to present you uh, with a talk that covers a not so typical use case of Apache Beam, but uh, maybe some of you will find it interesting. So let's start. Uh, first, we will define the problem that we are trying to solve. So uh, I think every one of you have heard about transactions. So we want to ensure atomic, consistent, isolated, and durable updates of multiple columns in a NoSQL database. NoSQL databases are known uh, for the fact that they don't typically have transactions. And if you have updates, concurrent updates to a single column, then you may end up with the inconsistent state of the database. So this is what we want to prevent. And this is our motivating examples. We, an example, we have two parties and we will call them keys because they are key in the, in the database and they are exchanging a randomly selected amount of money in a distributed environment. This is the most, most typical case of a transaction that everyone knows, I suppose. Uh, so let's see uh, about uh, how, to, how to explain the, the problem in a more practical way. If we have three transactions, T1, T2, and T3, and we know uh, what are the keys that are involved in each of these transactions. So that T1 is have keys A and B, T2, C and D, and T3, A and D. Uh, then what we want to uh, ensure is that all these transactions happen uh, as if uh, they were executed uh, sequentially and without any in interference uh, with uh, one another. Uh, we can see that transaction T1 and T2 do not share any uh, data or any state and therefore can be executed concurrently, while trans transaction T3 uh, is uh, having uh, dependency on both T1 and T2 because uh, uh, there is a column A updated in T1 and column D updated in T2. So we must execute transaction T3 only after T1 and T2 completes. Uh, we can see that as, as a causality barrier that separates transaction T1 and T2, while T1 and T2 are concurrent and can be executed in any randomly picked order, uh, and they will have the same outcome. Transaction, transaction T3 has to be executed only after T1 and T2 completes. The outputs are committed and the outputs are read by the transaction T3. So uh, if I rephrase that, uh, given a transaction stream, identify transactions possibly violating causality and therefore ACID properties of a transaction and reject them before being written to the output database. So we want to write pipeline that will be able to validate the, the pro proper properties of a transaction stream and find those transactions that violate uh, the, the ACID properties. And what do we mean by transaction rejection is a uh, we have a client that wants to write a transaction and we want Apache Beam Pipeline to be able to tell him that this transaction was rejected due to uh, some stale data that was read during the transaction, some conflict happening, and the client responsibility is then to retry the transaction uh, and refetch the inputs and do all the logic again. Well, if the if the outcome of the, of the transaction commit request is that the transaction was committed, then the system itself must ensure that the database is up updated uh, eventually because otherwise it would get into an inconsistent state. So uh, let's describe that uh, a little more practically. If we have, uh, let's say, these four transactions, we can. this is the time axis on the left. And we can see that transactions T1 and T2 do not share any, uh, any keys. So they are executed and committed concurrently. And then it comes to transaction T3. We can see that the transaction T3 begins before transaction T1 is committed. And there is a shared key, key A, between T1 and T3. And therefore, the transaction T3 has to be rejected. The client will be notified that uh, this transaction cannot be proceed in this way and has to be uh, retried. Uh, transaction T4, on the other hand, can be committed provided that all the outputs from T1 and T2 are already known to transaction T4. Therefore, uh, there can be some latency be before, between T1 and T2 uh, outputs are written to the output database, uh, which means uh, that uh, this latency can cause uh, that reading 
uh, key B in transaction T4 can read some stale data. Therefore, our Apache Beam pipeline has to uh, be aware of uh, what are the actual values that should be expected on input of transaction T4 and validate that this was really the case. So that transaction T4 started after uh, T1 and T2 were successfully written to the output database. Uh, now, uh, let's move this into the Apache Beam world. Um, this means we would like to have a pipeline that accepts requests of, from a client and returns responses and uh, communicates with a database where it stores the results of transactions and returns the data to the, uh, to the client. Uh, so how do we achieve this uh, using Apache Beam? Is that we can use uh, Splitable Dufan or SDF uh, for writing uh, servers that will, write, that will uh, sit on uh, worker of, uh, uh, of a distributed runner of our cho cho that we choose. Uh, and each of these workers will run his own version of a gRPC server, uh, which will feed the requests into in-process queue, which will then in turn be read by possibly multiple instances of splittable DoFN uh, that uh, sits in, in on the same worker. Uh, due to the fact that we want to uh, be able to configure the clients uh, that should communicate with the system, we would like to place a load balancer before the workers, if it's possible. Uh, and uh, uh, this load balancer will, will uh, load balance the requests to the gRPC uh, server instances running on the workers. Each request is then, uh, as usual, uh, output to downstream processing, where it uh, can be uh, verified if, if the transaction is uh, correct or not. Or if it's a read request, then it uh, reads data from the database and returns to the client, which returns me to the second point is how to get responses from the pipeline, because the typical uh, case is that the uh, pipeline has a source and sync. Uh, so in this case, we also would like to build a sync uh, that uh, the pipeline can use to return response to a client. And we can implement this in a way that uh, uh, the client sends, uh, runs locally on his local host, uh, runs a response server, and then sends address of the server uh, in, inside the request to the, to the pipeline. And then when the pipeline needs to return response to the client, then it uses this uh, address to connect to the client and push uh, response to the, uh, to the server. Therefore, the client needs to send uh, identification of the request because everything then happens asynchronously. So it has to be able to pair request with the response, but the pipeline is now able to push the response to the client uh, at its own will. And this is how the pipeline would look uh, completely in some abstract way. So we have a client that sends the data to a gRPC server, and this gRPC server then uh, sp uh, splits this request into two paths. One is the read path, where reading uh, some keys from, from, from this database, which we want to shield from the client, uh, means that we read the data and return it immediately to the to the client because this path should be as quick as possible with as low latency as we can achieve. We also store the data that was read by the client inside the transaction in this uh, verification P transform, which uh, can then ensure that the transaction was really reading the most recent data and then commit it or see that the transaction was uh, reading some stale data and then uh, ensure that it is aborted. So if uh, the request is to commit a transaction, <clears throat> then this, uh, uh, this uh, P transform does uh, the verification and sends uh, the, the decision if the transaction should be committed or rejected into a buffer. And this is a really important part 
because the buffer is here to ensure that uh, writing to a database and responding to the client is uh, uh, consistent so that uh, there is there is not no chance that we've write to a database transaction that was rejected uh, to send to the client as a rejected or vice versa we ensure that by uh, um, using annotation for a process element of a do fun uh, which is called requires stable input and this is really important because what it uh, does is that it uh, waits until uh, any data that arrived is uh, safely uh, persisted into a checkpoint or committed into a bundle and then uh, after only after then passes the uh, output to to the downstream processing ensuring that everything down here will see the same uh, this is how the pipeline looks uh, on a Flink runner, uh, I used Flink runner because that was the one that I <clears throat> have the easiest access to. Uh, here is a link to the to the repository where you can see the the POC implementation of uh, this whole uh, ACID uh, transaction uh, uh, pipeline, and we can see that there is uh, the read path uh, which is on top, and then uh, the write path. Uh, goes down and then there is a operator that is highlighted in in more red, which uh, shows that the verification of the transactions is uh, somewhat uh, more uh, involved, uh, and the runner spends more time in that. And it's actually the the throughput uh, limiter of the pipeline, uh, the bottleneck, uh, because uh, it is. Uh, in the in the POC implementation, it is uh, single threaded. Uh, that's because uh, it is more easy uh, to implement, which I will get uh, to soon. Why is that? And uh, the the uh, <clears throat> uh, the operator accesses uh, state quite heavily, and there is also some uh, some parts that maybe could be improved in the runner because uh, it uses serialization uh, and coders very heavily. Uh, here are some outputs or some statistics that I gathered from a running uh, pipeline. Uh, I get some something because between 600 and 700 uh, transactions per second committed uh, <clears throat> and something about 20 transactions rejected per second. Uh, this is this uh, the number of rejected transactions mostly depends on how much contention there is between clients that are accessing the database if the key space is huge then there is low uh, low contention and the the number of rejected transactions will be low on the other hand if there is high uh, contention then of course the number of rejected transactions will be high because there is a real uh, there is high probability of fetching uh, stale uh, stale data by the client and this is some that is uh, more uh, the, 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 this I think is for a proof of concept. It's quite good because 700 trans committed transactions looks like it could be usable. On the other hand, the latency is really high, and this uh, <clears throat> due to how Flink works with the checkpoint barriers and the requires stable input annotation that I mentioned. Uh, so there is a, a room for improvement because the the checkpoint really uh, travels from one operator to the other. And there is uh, currently no, uh, no way that I figured out how to, how to make this uh, quicker. Uh, on the other hand, this might be a runner dependent, which I get to right now. So if we want to uh, implement something like this on Apache Beam, what we need to consider if we choose a runner is that we need a runner that supports requires stable input. Uh, unfortunately, this is currently only data flow and non-portable flink, uh, which is a pity. And some runners even ignore the annotation, which is actually a correctness bug because the pipeline might, uh, as, even, as is in, in this case, uh, <clears throat> might be built around the support of this, of this annotation. So if the pipeline runs uh, and doesn't support it, then the pipeline will likely get incorrect results. There is an issue telling that this annotation is ignored on Porta Flink Runner, unfortunately. I hope this will be fixed soon. <clears throat> and uh, then we have the latency, uh, latency considerations, which 
uh, if we have a bundle based runners like dataflow this is likely to be uh, to be to have a lower latency because committing a bundle should be a lightweight process uh, as opposed to to passing checkpoint barrier through all the operators uh, and only then uh, starting a new checkpoint. So this, uh, I didn't check it for myself because I don't have easy access to data flow uh, currently. Uh, but uh, I think that running the pipeline on data flow will result in a much lower latency than the 15 seconds that I mentioned. So what are the current limitations? It is only a POC. All of this that I presented here is not used in production or in any of that. This is uh, only to uh, try to push the Apache Beam model to uh, some some uh, maybe currently not too many explored, uh, too, much, too much explored uh, areas. And it uses single threaded validator, which is what I already mentioned that uh, this was the, the bottleneck of the, of the pipeline running on Flink as well. Uh, and it is possible to, to, to rewrite this validator in, in a parallel way, but it requires feedback loop. Uh, so that uh, the, if, we, if we split the validation of a transaction into multiple parallel uh, or distributed uh, steps, then we need to uh, feed back the, the outcome of the, of the process if the, if the transaction was committed or rejected so that all the, the involved operators can update their state appropriately. This would be nice if we could add something like that to the Apache B model to make it easier, although it can be implemented in, in user space uh, just fine. It just maybe a little too, uh, too much code to write. So more inf information, if you would uh, be interested in any of this, uh, can be found in the uh, Building Up Big Data Pipelines with Apache Beam book that covers uh, the parts needed to understand the Apache Beam model and uh, uh, how it is built, or if you are interested in in the transactions itself and the algorithm, how it works, and uh, if it can be extended to a more general case, then it's just uh, the the simple case of exchanging some money between two uh, two parties. Uh, then there are some links uh, of a streaming platform that uh, I'm working on, and uh, if would any, anyone would be interested uh, in uh, some open source uh, software, then uh, don't hesitate to contact me or there is a link to a, to a design document that is describing what I just uh, said here. And that's it. If you have any questions.